Hi, welcome to another session of webcasts. I'm Gauji. I'm John. And today John is going to help us set up Grunt. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who don't really know what Grunt is, it's a task runner build tool that does like all this super awesome stuff for us. Um, and it's going to really make your workflow just that much faster. It kind of takes care of all the grunt work. I'm totally intended to. <laughs> um, it takes care of all the sort of like mundane, boring things that you kind of have to do when you're developing front end code, but don't really want to spend all the time doing. Um, so things like minifying your files, right? A file size is a big, mm -hmm. big problem. Uh, in web design, and you know you want to get rid of all that white space and just make it as small as possible. Grunt will handle that for you. Mm -hmm. um, it'll handle like compiling any sort of uh, special code you use. So if you use any sort of CSS uh, preprocessors like SAS or uh, Stylus, or if you use any sort of um, compiled like JavaScript language like CoffeeScript or mm -hmm. TypeScript, it'll handle all the compilation of those. Um, it'll also you know concat like your JavaScript files together so users don't have to request a bunch of JavaScript files all at once. They can just So it helps with optimizations too? Yes, optimizations too. Uh, it'll optimize images for you. Uh, you can even set up like your Git workflow with it. So you can, you know, link it up to GitHub, add some Git commands into it, and it'll you can just type in like grunt git and it'll, you know, log in, push changes, <laughs> merge changes. So if you find yourself Basically, if you find yourself doing a repetitive task over and over again in your front end development, mm -hmm. you could probably get Grunt to do it for you. Okay, um, sorry. I feel like there's a lag. Might be a little bit of mm -hmm. lag. We'll see if that comes up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that that's kind of the, the cool thing about Grunt. Um, it just lets you really focus in on what's the most important part and what you should really be focusing on, which is your coding. Uh, and then you kind of get to avoid all the sort of uh, boring stuff that you don't really want to do. <laughs> um, but there is a bit of a learning curve to Grunt, and I think a lot of people kind of struggle with this at first. It's actually a really simple tool once you get it set up and once you kind of start playing around with it. And so uh, I'm going to pretty much spend probably the next 30 to 40 minutes uh, kind of going over how to install Grunt on your system, mm -hmm. how to set up a basic Grunt file, and and some other kind of little cool things you can do with yeah. Grunt. Um, and then Grunt will come in handy if our students want to exceed specs for Project 4. Yeah, um, yeah. the website performance mm -hmm. optimization project, and also the neighborhood of that project. Yeah, and I mean, it, it pretty much is a fairly standard tool, Grunt, or uh, the other popular one is Gulp. Gulp. Yeah. You like that one better, I, thank you. I do like the gold better. <laughs> um, yeah, and I won't dive into the, all the reasons why I like gold better. Um, Grunt still is a very, very popular task runner. Mm -hmm. um, it's, in fact, more popular than gold still. And uh, it's really easy to use. So, uh, so how about we switch over to my screen? Sounds good. And, uh, and we'll start talking a little bit about uh, how to use Grunt. So, um, first Let's start with the wallpaper. Oh, yes, my awesome wallpaper. It's very motivational, <laughs> yes. you know, because sucking at something is the first step to being sort of good at something. And I think that's like really how I feel about Grunt. Mm -hmm. Totally sucked with Grunt at first. <laughs> I used it for like one thing. I couldn't even get it set up the first time I ever used it. And then the more I started using it, the better and better I got at it, and the more useful of a tool it became. Yeah. So, so just something to let you all know that we posted the GitHub repo mm -hmm. that John is going to work off of. Yeah, so uh, in the front end broadcast section of the discussion forum uh, about this event, I included a, if you scroll down a little bit, a post there. And uh, I don't know why that's opening twice. <laughs> uh, is a grunt workflow guide. And so you can go ahead and clone this, download it as a zip, Work it, whatever you want to do. Um, this is going to kind of be the repository that I'm working through today. And, um, and the link is also posted in the description section. Yes. Yes. Um, and so in particular, the, the thing you're probably going to want to look at is the commits I'm going to be going through. Uh, so each of the commits is kind of like a different step in what we're going to be doing today. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first commit is the start commit. And if you want your project to start uh, at this commit, uh, I should have done this before. Dun, dun, dun. 
John, you have a student who has the same wallpaper as you. Oh, awesome. I love it. I apologize if Tron, I'm not sure how to pronounce Con, Con, Tron. Con, Tron. Yep, I love this wallpaper. <laughs> um, so if you want to start at the beginning as well after you clone this repo, um, or you uh, download it as a zip or whatever, if you do git, or actually let's, let's make this a little bit easier. Um, if you go to the grunt workflow guide on here and just hit this little commits thing, and go to the very first commit here. I'm just making this as easy as possible. You can do it all from the command line using like git log or yep. git grep and things like that. But um, you just copy this commit number in the top right, and you do git checkout, and then that commit number, and then that'll uh, that'll give us just all the the base base mm -hmm. start files. So this pretty much just has my source directory, which has a JS and SAS folder. And in my JS folder, there's just two little JavaScript files which really don't do anything fun. And uh, one little uh, SAS file that just has one little style in it. Um, I kept things simple, so we're not doing a whole lot. But it, it's easy to just sort of like expand these ideas to uh, the bigger topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's take a look then at how do we actually install Grunt. Um, so the first thing you actually need to do is you actually need to install Node.js. Uh, so Node.js is a fancy asynchronous I.O. language that some very, very smart people wrote. Um, it basically does a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go into all the details. It's pretty simple to install. You just click the install. It's going to download something on your computer. And then you just run sort of the little install wizard, mm -hmm. and it sets itself up pretty well. And it's pretty OK on both yeah. Mac and Windows. And so on Mac, it'll basically uh, install itself right into your uh, user bin folder. So you can run it right from the terminal, usually from the get-go. So from here, if I type you know, which NPM, it tells me which NPM I'm using. Mm -hmm. On Windows, I believe it installs a uh, like node shell client or like node um, PowerShell. And from there, you basically just open up that sort of Bash or GUI or whatever mm -hmm. they call it. It's been a while since I've taken a look yeah. at it. But you basically just do all your node work from there. Um, and it's just like having a terminal. Uh, most of the commands are the same. And uh, yeah, so that's the first thing you need. Is The first thing you need is node. Uh, the next thing uh, is I would always say, you know, take a look at the Grunt website. Uh, they have a great sort of follow along, where is it, getting started guide. Um, but it maybe doesn't explain a lot of things. Uh, the most important thing, though, that you need to do is you need to install the command line interface. Mm -hmm. um, and you do that pretty simply. After you install Node, you'll have access to the Node Package Manager. Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but this is just gruntjs.com? Yes. So yes. if you want to open that. Um, and so you want to do npm install. And then you can choose to not install it globally. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, command here, this hyphen g, is going to install this globally on my system. And uh, then you just type in grunt CLI. And so npm is the node package manager. It's going to handle you know, getting all the uh, files that you need, installing them to the proper directories. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you guys do run into any trouble at this step, uh, for whatever reason, like N it says NPM isn't defined, or you're getting any kind of errors, um, feel free to post in the forums. I'll be happy to help sort of uh, debug what's going on. Uh, it's a little hard to do over video chat just because it's kind of different for every user. Uh, sometimes your NPM doesn't get installed correctly, or it does get installed, but the system variables aren't set correctly mm -hmm. on your environment. Uh, so then you just run this. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed. Um, and then you'll have Grunt, or the Grunt CLI. At least. Mm -hmm. So now the first thing uh, we want to do, if I can actually go yep, back to my on. notes here, um, is in our folder, we want to run npm init. I'm going to make this a little bigger. So uh, all the files or all the plugins we're going to be using with Grunt mm -hmm. uh, are actually installed through the Node Package Manager, mm -hmm. and they're all Node.js modules. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create what's called a package.json file, mm -hmm. which uh, Node basically uses to track our dependencies. 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you use npm init, it just kind of takes you through this little walkthrough guide. I'm going to name it that, give it that version. My grunt demo is my description. Uh, you probably don't need to define an entry point or test commands. That's the Git repository. You can give it some keywords. You can find out what all of these mean just by Googling npm init you know, mm -hmm. to walk through or tutorial or whatever. Um, and you can find a little bit more details about what all of these are. I'm the author. Sure, let's give it an ISC license. And then it's going to basically give us this JSON. And basically, yeah, summary in JSON form. It just says, does this look good? Yeah, sure, that looks good. And now if we take a look, we see we have a package.json file in our directory. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what that allows us to do is uh, if we share this, if I put this up on GitHub with the package.json, and a user just downloads it or clones the repo mm -hmm. and just types in uh, npm install, uh, it'll just install all of the dependencies you need to use for that project from the package.json file. Looks like we had a question here. So Robert uh, was asking, could you explain why we, may, we might need to write sudo before our commands? Uh, OK, so sudo uh, is basically just like a super user command. Mm -hmm. um, if you Typically, it's if you don't have administrator access or root access. Uh, you have to put sudo before this command because it is installing and writing to the hard drive or you know, writing to the, the system. Mm -hmm. uh, that's typically when you're going to have to use sudo. Uh, if you own the computer, it's probably not a problem. But if you're using like a work computer and there's certain uh, you know, things that are locked off mm -hmm. and you can't install specific software, you might have to go to your system administrator to give you access to install these things. Uh, typically, they're pretty lacks about installing software like this, especially when you're a front-end developer. Um, but yeah, that's typically why you have to use sudo commands, just because you might not have administrator access to it. So it's basically to override mm -hmm. the admin. Basically, it just says, I am the admin. Let me do this. <laughs> and usually, you'll have to type your password in. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do a sudo command, it'll just ask for your password. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Cool. So we have our, uh, our package.json set up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so now to actually install Grunt, we're going to do the command npm install save dev. Uh, and so the save dev thing is basically, or this uh, command is going to save this dependency to our package.json as a developer dependency. And so developer dependencies are just anything that uh, your website doesn't necessarily need to run, but you as a developer are going to use to develop your website. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Grunt is one of those things, right? It's not a dependency that our clients need to use. It's really only a dependency we're using to run Grunt. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to type in this command. It's going to give me a little warning that there's no readme data. And then it's going to install a bunch of stuff. If I take a look inside, I now have a node modules folder. Mm -hmm. And inside that node modules folder is the Grunt node module. Okay. All right, so uh, we have Grunt. It can't really do anything exciting yet because we need a grunt file. Uh, so I'm just going to make a grunt file here. And it's a JavaScript file. And let's actually open up our project in Sublime now. All right. Uh, hopefully, that is big enough for everybody to see. I don't know if I can make my gut or my sidebar yeah. any bigger. But that's OK. Um, so we have this grunt file now. And there's absolutely nothing in it. Um, and we also have right our JS file. We have two JavaScript scripts and our SAS file. I like file. those scripts. <laughs> yes, very uh, very advanced JavaScript <laughs> going on right here, um, and a very you know advanced style going on here. And this is actually a SAS file. Mm -hmm. um, this is sort of uh, pre-processed CSS, uh, which we're going to use Grunt to convert into usable CSS. Okay. Um, if you want to learn a lot more about you know, SAS, uh, feel free to do so on your own. I'll probably post a you know, post on the forums uh, detailing how to go through SAS. It's a really, really great language, but I would say learn CSS first. Um, so I'm going to scroll down my notes here yeah. real quick. Uh, so the first thing we probably want to do is uh, we want to compile, like I said, our SAS into CSS. Um, that's going to be a great first step. 
And in order to do that, uh, we're going to have to install a Grunt plugin. So Grunt is all about plugins, really. I mean, you can do a lot of this stuff in Grunt without using any plugins. Mm -hmm. But people have already written a lot of code that do a lot of these things we want to do. And it's just easier utilizing plugins. So if you go to the gruntjs.com page and go to their plugin section, you can search through all the plugins that they have. And any of the ones with a star next to them are built by the Grunt team. Um, and they're typically, you know, they're fully tested, they work, they're always up to date. Um, and then anyone that doesn't have a star next to it is made by somebody else. Um, but there's also some like really, really good ones. Like I, I really like the uh, SVG min one. Um, for, I mean, for people who like using SVG, it's fantastic. Um, but as you can see, I mean, there's like grunt uh, plugins for everything. A lot of um, there's a total of 4,403 different plugins. Wow. Um, yeah, and they do everything from watching for changes to minifying code to linting to concatting, and we're going to do some of that today. So the one we're going to want is grunt sass, or what is it? What do I what do I call it? I think it's yeah, grunt okay. sass. Oh, apparently, what? no matching records. Let's try SAS. There we go. Yep. <laughs> SAS, here we go. Uh, so we're going to use this one. Uh, it's not built by the Grunt team, but I like it a little bit more. Uh, and so it gives us, uh, takes us to NPM, the Node Package Manager website. And it gives us a little direction here on how to install it, and also a few directions on how to use it. Um, so in order to install it, we've got to go back to our terminal. And we run the command npm install save dev front sass, right? OK. Um, so again, this is going to save it to our developer dependencies. So when someone else picks up our package.json, they'll be able to install all of our project uh, developer dependencies as well. And we let that magic happen. Do, 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 do. A little slow. All right. And it's installing. This might take a minute. All right, cool. We're all installed, we're set up, and we're ready to start using Grunt SAS. So let's go back to Sublime Text. And actually, I'm going to make this full screen. And um, let's start with how do we actually how do we actually start our Grunt file? So it's obviously a blank slate. Um, so the first thing we got to do is we need to actually load our sort of grunt module. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a grunt, basically, file wrapper. And so this is pretty much what you're going to start every grunt file you create with. And this basically just uh, imports grunt to make it usable in your file. This is just basically saying, I'm going to use this grunt module. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that that's pretty straightforward. That's the grunt wrapper, um, pretty much. Like I said, any grunt file we write is probably going to start with this. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to load our plugin. So to do that, we use the command grunt, load npm tasks, and then grunt sass. So that's going to load our, our new node module, which is in our node module folder, grunt sass. And now we can use this in our project. So now we need to actually configure the task. So we've loaded it. Now we need to actually give it some directions. So we're going to do grunt.init config. And this defines the initial configuration for this grunt task. Uh, so we're calling, uh, or if we look back at the, uh, the guide here, it gives us a little directions on how to define things. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically just call sass. We define a sass method. And then we define our files that we want to read from. So in this case, um, we're going to make our SAS configuration. Mm -hmm. We're going to say this is the directories we want to look in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our source directory, which will be source SAS style.scss. And the output destination is going to be our dis. CSS style dot CSS. So you have to have the dist folder ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or the, sorry, the destination folder doesn't need to be there. 
Okay. So we can so see that. Make I, it for you. Yeah, it'll automatically make this uh, dist slash CSS dot uh, style dot CSS mm -hmm. file for me. All right. So now we're configured. And now there's only one more step. We actually need to register the task. Okay. So to register the task, what we're going to do is we're going to say grunt.register.task. And we're going to call this our default task. And our default task is going to take, it takes two parameters, this task method. It takes the name, which we're calling default. And then it takes either a, a list or a function. In this case, I'm going to pass it a list. And in my list, or array, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm going to give it the name SAS. And this is basically just saying, call this call this grunt configuration. So it's going to call. Just register task. Did I, oh, yeah, register task. There we go. Thank you for catching my typos. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is basically just saying, go and execute this task. Um, which is basically going to load this grunt SAS task. And uh, it's going to run it. So let's see how we run this. So we go back to our terminal. Mm -hmm. And all we got to do is just say grunt. Woohoo. All right. Running SAS dist SAS task done without errors. Okay. All right. So let's see what that did. Oh, so we now have a distribution folder mm -hmm. with a CSS folder and some file called style.css. So it basically took my SCSS, uh, which I defined here, and basically compiled it into CSS. So pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. pretty simple. Let's, let's try one more thing. So, so let's follow this pattern again, um, except now we're going to do a different uh, task. So we're going to concatenate our two JavaScript files. So we have two JavaScript files, and I want them to be one JavaScript file so our users only have to do one request. Um, so this is a pretty common practice. It you know, saves space. It saves you know, bandwidth and everything. Um, so to do this, we're going to say we're going to first install our plugin. So we're going to say npm install save dev. And the plugin I'm going to use is grunt contrib concat. We're going to run that, and it's going to take a couple seconds to install. Awesome, it's ready. We're going to load our task, grunt.load npm tasks, grunt contrib concat, if I can spell. <laughs> and then we're going to configure our task. So we're going to have a concat task. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give it a source folder. In this case, we're going to give it our JavaScript folder, and we're going to use what's called globbing. So globbing is uh, basically using wildcard characters, in this mm -hmm. case the asterisk, to say, I want you to look for any file in my JavaScript directory that ends with a .js. So the star is just telling you you want to get all JavaScript mm -hmm. types. Yeah. And if you want to know like what other sort of uh, wildcard characters you can use for globbing. Um, you can feel free to Google grunt globs. Uh, it'll give you a nice outline of all the different ways you can mm -hmm. sort of target specific files. The asterisk just tends to be the most common one because usually you just want to hit all the files in a specific mm -hmm. folder. You can also hit like all subfolders. So maybe if I had like JS and then like a bunch of subfolders in my mm -hmm. JS folder, I can do something like this. And this will say, all right, every folder in my JavaScript folder uh -huh. and any file that ends in .js, I want you to do this too. Um, but we don't have any subfolders, so we're not going to do that. And then we're going to set a destination. So we're going to put this in our distribution folder, JS, and I don't remember what I called it. Um, I think it was, let's we'll call it app.js for fun. And then the last thing is to remember to register our task. There have been plenty of times where I've gone through all this step, all these steps, and I forgot to register it. And I'm like, why isn't it running? Why isn't it running? And I'll go back and look at my code, and I'm like, everything looks right. And it's all because I simply didn't register my task. So we'll save that. We'll go back to our terminal, and we'll type in grunt. 
And we see that it ran our SAS task, our concat task, and it finished without errors. And if we look back here, we see we have a distribution folder, a JS folder in our distribution folder, and an app.js, which concatenated our two mm -hmm. JavaScript files. So really cool. So again, right, that was that one, that one, and now they're combined into one. Nice. Now, if you want to run a task individually, so right now I have this default task. And so when I type grunt, mm -hmm. it automatically looks for the task name default and runs whatever is in that. But say I just want to run my concat, I can do grunt concat. And that will run, as we can see, just my concat task. Uh -huh. And that can be pretty useful when you have like really big grunt files or you begin defining a lot of like really complex tasks. and Grunt can be kind of slow. If you try running like a whole grunt file, it could take you know a couple minutes. And all you really wanted to do was compile some JavaScript mm -hmm. or um, sorry, compile some coffee script or concat some JavaScript. Uh, so usually if you name your tasks correctly, it's pretty easy to just say, okay, just run the concat task or just run the you know style task. All right, so that's sort of the basic setup with grunt. Um, you can pretty much get away with following this workflow. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty useful, I think, if you kind of stick to this workflow. But it can get really unorganized and really messy, and you may end up with like a you know you know a single grunt file that's ten thousand lines long, uh, just because you're going to have to load these tasks every time, mm -hmm. right? Every time you install a new plugin, you got to load it. It could get confusing in here, like what each of these is referencing. Like, is this working on my JavaScript? Is this working on my uh -huh. you know, styles or whatever? The paths can get confusing. Like, say I need to change a path or something, or a file name, and then I'm referencing it 100 times in my file. Like in Sublime, you know, it's pretty easy because I can select you know, multiple lines, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to do it that way. So, Let's modularize this a little bit. Mm -hmm. let's, let's make this a little bit easier to use. So the first thing, and, and probably the most useful thing I suggest everybody uh, does, is use a plugin called Load Grunt Tasks. So we're going to say npm install save dev, because we pretty much always have to do mm -hmm. this. Uh, load Grunt Tasks. Tasks with an S. We're going to let that install. All right, so we see these two lines up here. And mm -hmm. I probably don't want to have to use these every time. As I start installing more plugins, I don't want to have to keep saying, right, load this task, grunt, load this task, grunt, load this task. Mm -hmm. It's going to get really repetitive and annoying. Mm -hmm. So with that new plugin, what we can do is we can simply just say require load grunt tasks and give it our grunt object, mm -hmm. and make sure we put a semicolon, or my linter is going to complain at me. Oh, I'm surprised it's not complaining about that either. Um, so what this is going to do is this is actually going to look at our node modules folder. It's going to look for our dependencies, and it's going to import anything that's grunt related into mm -hmm. this project. So if we take a look back here and we run grunt, we can see that everything runs fine just like before. And now anytime we have to install a plugin, we don't have to remember to load it. Load. So that saves you know, easily 1, 10, 15, 25, just tons of plugins, lines of yeah. code. Um, so that makes it really simple. And then that way, it's less of a step to remember. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, they're just like having to register a task, it's easy to forget to load a task and just like dive right into the configuration, um, this saves a lot of time, I feel like. And I, I personally like using this with any grunt file when I use grunt. Um, so that's the first sort of thing we can do to sort of organize our code, clean it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, what we can do is we can create a configuration file to handle our directory. So I mentioned okay. before, right? If we have a bunch of tasks and they all have, you know, they're all referencing style.scss, and maybe I want to change like specific tasks, um, I probably am going to want to um, 
be able to rename these quickly, make it a little easier. Mm -hmm. um, looks like we actually have a lot of questions, yeah. huh? Okay. Uh, Let's start with Stephen's question. And Stephen asks, this is a make utility? Uh, a little bit. It's a little bit like a make utility. So um, make utilities, if I remember correctly, are primarily from the C, C++, C mm -hmm. realm. And they're more for you know compiling the code and, and optimizing the code and things like that. Um, so it's a little bit like a make tool. Um, I think it's a little different though. Um, I'm not super. I haven't played a lot with make files. Yeah. But it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. Juan is another question. Can you explain when would concat be useful? Would be would there be any performance gain? Yeah, so uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. it, it depends. Um, so you may not necessarily want to concatenate all your files together. Um, but all your if you have multiple JavaScript files, say I'm uh, I want to keep my code, my you know, production code like fairly organized and modular, so I can just mm -hmm. open up a JavaScript file and know exactly what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to help a lot in the end to just concatenate all those files into app.js. And that way, when the user hits, they can request only just one JavaScript file right off the gate. It gets cached, whatever. Um, and then they don't have to keep calling that, calling for different JavaScript files every time they're trying to run a different task. They don't yeah. have to make a bunch of requests. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, uh, sometimes it is nice to be able to just like, Cut a little bit of fat out if it's a JavaScript or a JavaScript function that's not getting called a lot, mm -hmm. um, and then just request it only when the user. Um, I would say it depends, <laughs> uh, but typically concat is very useful. I tend to try to concat as many of my files as I can to just kind of get that initial page request done, mm -hmm. um, and typically you don't see like a huge hit to performance initially on the initial page load. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say it's pretty useful for pretty much anything we'll be doing in this class, and for most big projects, it's it's pretty useful. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just kind of play it by ear, I guess. And as the web op and browser performance optimization class is always saying, measure, 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 measure. Yeah, measuring. <laughs> always measure. Thanks, man. A couple of more questions, Sean. Jim asks. Does grunt contra conca work with min.js and JS files too without errors, or do we need to keep them already minified or other JS files separate? Yeah, so uh, it should work with min.js files. Mm -hmm. I've never, I haven't run into a problem with it with anything yet. Um, I, I feel like he's asking for concatenating files that are minified and files that are not minified. Yeah, yeah, so that'll work. Um, I don't think I have a very great demo here. But basically, what would end up happening is if you know this was a minified file, it, it would basically just shove itself into this single line. Uh -huh. And so line four would just be like this big, long, minified file. Uh -huh. And then this would be sort of like the unminified code. Okay. You can use Grunt to actually do minification as well. Mm -hmm. If the file's already minified, it'll just run it through the minifier again really fast. Um, but yeah, they they'll, they play pretty nice together. Basically, all it does is it just sort of appends all the, the JavaScript files together. There's a little bit more that goes on there, but that's sort of the, the rule of thumb. OK. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jim, for the question. A couple of more. <laughs> Every time I say there's two more, the one has yeah. another question. OK, so Richard asks, says, this seems decorative, but does grunt or any task support convention over convention over configuration? For example, gulp. Gulp does. Gulp does. <laughs> he, he likes gulp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, let's, I'll let me read the rest yeah. of the question here. So for example, if you wanted to use ImageMatic to form or transform images in the images folder, does it support using that convention versus declaring the source and test? Yeah, so with Grunt, you can do a little bit of 
like just strict JS coding. Um, however, it's really all about a config file. I mean, Grunt is, is very much configuration over mm -hmm. convention. Um, whereas Gulp, if you want to dive into Gulp and are interested in learning that, that you write pure JavaScript. It's uh, like strict, like no JavaScript and everything. Um, instead of writing this big configuration file where I'm basically just defining a giant JSON object. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Grunt is pretty much all, the philosophy with Grunt is configuration over. Mm -hmm. over Thanks, Richard. Okay. Uh, Andrew's question is, I know Gulp is something similar to Grunt. How are they different, and what are some pros and cons of using each? OK, so besides the, so I think I mentioned the, the Grunt takes a kind of configuration over coding approach. And mm -hmm. Gulp is more you're writing JavaScript and less about writing a giant config file. Mm -hmm. Um, the other kind of major differences between the two is uh, Gulp is a lot faster um, since it is all sort of running asynchronously. Like mm -hmm. it really utilizes Node and it's just sort of streaming through Node. Whereas Grunt, um, until I, I'm not sure, there's a let me let me backtrack a bit. So Grunt in its current form is very mm -hmm. slow. Okay. Um, behind the scenes, it kind of sets up like a bunch of temporary folders and handles all these tasks in there, and runs a bunch of stuff, and kind of clears them out. And then it just runs like a lot slower because of that, because it's performing a lot more operations, whereas Gulp is just much more streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, however, Grunt has a much bigger community. You're probably going to more easily find help with Grunt. And there's a lot more packages, although it's starting to become a little bit closer as Gulp is gaining popularity. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I can think of is with Grunt, it's easy to hand it over to someone who doesn't know JavaScript that well mm -hmm. and say, like, you know, have them like set it up and use it. Um, whereas with Gulp, uh, it's a little bit harder to like hand a file over to someone who doesn't know JavaScript mm -hmm. and for them to look at it and understand what's going on. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. OK, I guess two or three more questions. Uh, I guess Alexandra wanted to know, um, can you pass a list of source files instead of using while cards when we're plotting together? Yeah, I believe so. Let's take a look. Let's go back. Um, I think if you do, I think you can give this a list. Uh -huh. Script one. Uh, let's see, source.js script. I can spell to.js. <laughs> I think that works. It's been a while since I've tried that. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can provide them as an array. Okay. Uh, or a list. Or whatever a list, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so you can do that instead of using wildcards. Um, yeah, so you can be a little bit more precise in what you're uh, mm -hmm. passing along. Adam wanted to know, why not just use NPM directly to run the tools? You can, and I actually recommend that. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe just a little bit more. I think I think Grunt and Gulp simplify things a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and they do have a lot of support. Like They're really great tools. Um, you can do it all from NPM directly, though. Uh, it's just a little bit more work. Yeah. All right. Well, but it's very you. fast. Do okay. it that way. One last question before we can go back. Uh, so that asks, is there a Grunt plugin for adding unit tests? Yeah. Yeah. Unit testing with Grunt is possible. I don't. Uh, what is the plugin? I mean, there's a bunch of them. I mean, I guess it mm -hmm. depends on what testing environment you're using. So, like, if I'm using Karma. Um, there's a Karma test runner, Chai, I believe there's one, maybe. Uh, there's Contrib node unit, which lets you run mm -hmm. node unit unit tests. So yeah, there's a bunch of them. And as you can see, I mean, you can just go through and search for all kinds of them. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of plugins to set up unit tests with Grunt. Same with Gold. Right. 
Um, yeah. We're done with questions, so we can go back to what you were talking about. What was I talking about? <laughs> we were. Um, oh yeah. So um, dealing with all these paths and file names that are cluttering mm -hmm. up our yes. our file our uh, directory or sorry our grunt file here. Mm -hmm. um, so what we can do is we can create what I like to call a YAML or YUM YAML file. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make a grunt file .yml, and this is going to be a file that I pretty much keep all my directories in. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to have an scss dir, and I'm going to source sass. I'm going to have my js source directory. Is going to be right source js. Mm -hmm. Got really bad typing today. <laughs> Concat dir, which is going to be our distribution for our concatenation, and also my CSS directory, which is going to be my distribution for my CSS. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to define these in my YAML file. Okay. And in my uh, grunt file, I'm going to import this configuration. var config equals grunt.file.readyaml. And I'm going to read in my grunt config.yml. So now I have this configuration variable, which contains any sort of configuration I define in this file. Mm -hmm. Now you can do you can do a lot more than just setting up directories with this. Um, so it's pretty portable, and it makes kind of making this a little cleaner and nice. And now instead of if I have you know a hundred different tasks, tasks or something, and I need to change the name or directory for something, mm -hmm. I can simply just change it, changes uh -huh. all of them in here without having to mess around too much with everything, and maybe miss one or make a typo somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so now I can just say, okay, I want this to be my uh, my source directory. So mm -hmm. what did I call that? My SCSS. I'm actually going to do this to make things a little easier, so I can see that. <laughs> and then, or sorry, um, that would be. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say sense. config because it's my config variable. Okay. There you go. And then the SCSS. Dir, and then my style. Uh, dot js, yes. I believe, right? Because that's just the directory. Yeah. Yes, the style. Dot js. There we go. And then my destination now is just config. Dot uh, css dir plus style. Dot css. Oh, except this is oh, not a js yeah. file. <laughs> and then the same thing here, we can just simply say um, config, and then we're going to do our JS source dir mm -hmm. uh, plus uh, type our JS files. And then here we're going to say just our config.js concat directory. And that's going to be app.js. So that makes it a little bit easier to go in and sort of change where things output and our input from. Uh, it all, you can also, like I said, do a lot more in sort of your uh, configure your YAML file. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. actually probably don't want to call that grunt file. I wanted to call it grunt config. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to work right because I'm mm -hmm. calling it grunt config. So now, if we run grunt, we should see hopefully everything run without errors. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, so one cool thing we can do uh, now with grunt is you know now that we have this defined, we can easily like lint our files as well mm -hmm. uh, in both sort of our source and output directory. And this is good practice because oftentimes you have coding mistakes in your source directory. Or maybe you know when you concatenate files, or um, something happens, it breaks some linter rules that you don't want it to break. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to install a linter here, and in particular, we're going to use JS hint. Mm -hmm. 
So I shouldn't have to say this again, but we're going to say npm install save dev, dev grunt contrib js hints. Mm -hmm. And that's going to install. And so now, right, we don't have to load our task. Uh, we can just say we're going to create our JS hint. <laughs> yep. And we're going to say let's lint everything. We're going to lint our grunt file, which is usually good practice. And we're going to lint our source directory. Do you need to start? Yes. So we're going to lint all our files, and we got to remember to register it. Otherwise, it's not going to run. <laughs> I'm going to get mad. <laughs> um, so okay. now we can run Grunt. Oh, and we got a warning. I'm missing a semicolon in my Grunt okay. file. Uh, where am I missing my semicolon? On line 32. Oh, yeah. So cool, I caught that. And so the nice thing about that, too, is um, in fact, you should probably call your linter first before you do any of your mm -hmm. uh, other JavaScript tasks. That way, they don't compile. Um, so basically, this didn't run anything mm -hmm. uh, because it aborted because there was a linter error. Uh, so now if I do grunt, it, it should work. Done without errors. Cool. Um, now, let's say we want to enforce a specific rule with our linter. Mm -hmm. um, let's say, for example, we want to enforce that we have to use triple equals all uh -huh. the time. Like, we don't want people to use double equals in this case. We can define an options attribute. So, this is within the linter. This is within the linter class or JS hint, or I shouldn't say class, or JS hint uh, method. JSON. And so in this options, we're going to give it an equal, equal, equal is true. Um, so JS hint has pretty comprehensive uh, documentation mm -hmm. on what kind of flags and options you can put up. I think if you go to their docs or list of all JS hint options, you can go in and read about like all the rules you can enforce. And the one we're enforcing is EQ, EQ, EQ. This option prohibits the use of double equals and not equals in favor of triple equal signs. Um, not equal, equal. And not equal, equal. Uh, so let's see if this worked. So let's go into our script. Let's save that. And let's run grunt. And there we go. I caught that error. It tells us that you know A equal equals B expected triple equal and instead saw double equal. So we can go fix that, run grunt, and hooray, everything runs just fine. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so the last thing I want to talk about uh, before we wrap up today, and actually this uh, uh, repository I gave you guys goes even a little further than this. But the last thing I wanted to talk about was defining a watch task. Mm -hmm. And watch tasks are really, really cool. So as we were doing before, basically I'd write code, and then I'd go in and run grunt every time I wanted something to happen. Mm -hmm. But say I just wanted to focus on coding, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted you know, maybe to add some more JavaScript here. And I wanted, when I saved, this to automatically run my grunt tasks. So what we can do is we can create what are called watch tasks. And as always, we need to install a plugin. <laughs> so we're going to do npm install save dev grunt Contrib watch. And we're going to let it install. It's installed. We're good to go. And you and don't need to load it? Don't need to load it. Anyway. Because we already did that. Mm -hmm. um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a watch task. And so in our watch task, we're going to watch, uh, we're going to have different watch tasks. In this case, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a SAS watch task. Mm -hmm. And the files that I'm going to define here are the files that we're watching. So in this case, we're going to watch our uh, source, our SAS directory. Uh -huh. And we're going to be specifically looking for anything, any subdirectory or file that ends with SCSS. Okay. Then we have to define what tasks we're going to run. 
Again, this can be a function, or I believe it, actually, I think it has to be an array. And we're going to call our SAS function. We can also you know, call other functions. So I can call JS hints as well on here. Mm -hmm. And it'll execute both of these on a change. Mm -hmm. But obviously, since we're editing a SAS file, we don't need to limit <laughs> it. Um, so let's do that. And also, don't forget to register it. So before, when we ran a task, right, it said done without errors. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens this time. So I call grunt, hopefully no errors. All right, there we go. Now we says now it says running watch task waiting. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's go in here and get rid of this important tag because we probably shouldn't be using those. I save it, and we see that file has uh -huh. changed running this task, done without errors, and now it's waiting again for more change. If we take a look here, we can see that our important has left the building. Let's add another thing. Let's say block. Let's do HTML height 100%. Save it. Go back to our style. And there we go. Uh -huh. Automatically compiled. Grunt ran that task because we're watching that file. So watch tasks are really, really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, you can even set up watch tasks that will watch you know, your JavaScript. You can set up watch tasks that will basically just recompile or run any task you want when certain files change. Um, and it becomes really, really useful when you want to just be able to focus on coding and not have to worry about you know, minifying everything all the time mm -hmm. and having to switch back and forth between those. Um, so that's about all we have time for today. Yep. Um, I had actually a lot more planned, um, but I'll put those up on the forum uh, so you can feel free to follow along with the rest. Uh, the rest is a little advanced. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. What I showed you here today is probably enough to get you started with Grunt and get you using it pretty reasonably. Um, if you have any questions, though, feel free to post on the forum. Um, and you can add me directly in the post at John Mav. That's J-O-H-N-M-A-V. And yeah, and unless we have any other questions, I think we might call it a wrap for the yeah. day. How did that go? Did I do a good job there? Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. I hope you all felt the same way as I did. Yeah, so like I said, um, Grunt is going to be really useful in the future. I don't know a front end or full stack developer who doesn't yeah. use it or something similar. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, Grunt and Gulp are the two most popular, um, but there's millions of them out there. Uh, I know kind of an up and coming one that I haven't really had a chance to use yet is Broccoli, yeah. um, but it looks pretty promising. Uh, but it's still very new and doesn't have a lot of support yet, so yeah. it probably is not as easy to learn about. Mm -hmm. um, but there's you know hundreds of these. Different Is there another there. vegetable? I forget. There might be another vegetable I one. I heard another one. It's okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> all these crazy names for all these crazy things. Grunt, gold, broccoli. Oh, well, thank you, Adam. Adam says great job. Oh, oh thank cool. you. All right, cool. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll see have... you next Monday. Next Monday, yeah. Uh, and we're going to meet another teacher. Yeah, more teachers. Woo yep. Awesome. All right. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye.